Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're making the Gin and Tonic. Or the Gin Tonic. Or the Gin Tonic, as our friends from across the pond who invented this drink call it. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the most iconic drinks in cocktail history. Wouldn't you, don't you think? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we're going to make uh, the Gin and Tonic. Gin Tonic. Or the Vodka Tonic. I hate saying the Gin Tonic. Why? Because we're in America. It bugs me. That the English drop words out willy nilly. It should be gin and tonic, but it's like, okay, gin tonic. I don't know why they do that, but it bugs me. I think they, you know, they invented the English language. They can do what they want. <laughs> no, but it's ridiculous. You, you're watching BBC, and they're saying, you know, the kid fell out of the tree. He's now recovering at hospital. Does that, that doesn't make sense. It should be he's at the hospital, or it's like. His broken leg is mended, so now he's back at university. Right? No, it makes no sense. They're just being efficient, you know? They're just taking out the extraneous <laughs> words and... I think... The, well, yeah, you might say that, but then... But then they go about adding U's to the word color. So it's not that they're being efficient, it's just that they're being troublesome. Yeah. And I don't like it. But I love this drink. Right, it's a great drink. We prefer the gin and tonic. Mm-hmm. Um... See, I have no issue saying vodka tonic. I don't know why that is. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but we have a friend who is not a big fan of gin, so she likes vodka tonic, which we'll make for her when she comes over. Gin is much more, has much more character to it mm-hmm. and is a better mix, I think, with the tonic water than the vodka. But if you're going to use vodka, use, you know, use one like our Boyd and Blair's here. Um, something with a lot of character to it. Right. I don't say Boyd and Blair's. I said our Boyd and Blair's. It's like we invented it, but no. <laughs> It's from Pennsylvania. The bottle's ours. Yes, we did, we did buy it. We, the invention isn't ours. But, um, you know, tonic water is a very bitter, um, fizzy drink, mm-hmm. right? And it's bitter because it has quinine in it. And quinine is the cure for malaria. So this drink has a history which goes way back, right? right? Yeah, and the gin and, uh, gin and tonic is, is kind of the original. And that's, that, that's why I like it, too, because there's such a history to it. There's a lot of... Um, all the reasons for why people were drinking it, I find fascinating. Yeah. Um, when we make it for ourselves, we'll take three ounces of gin, three ounces of tonic, mm-hmm. do a squeeze of uh, lime wedge and some ice, and then drink it. But when we have company over, uh, we'll do it a little more artistically, and that's how we're going to do it today. All mm-hmm. right? So let's begin making it, shall we? We're going to start with two ounces of gin. We're using this juni- uh, Junipero gin from uh, Anchor Brewing. We're going to do two ounces of that. The gin um, and the vodka is from the freezer, so they're chilled. And the tonic waters are from the refrigerator. I'm going to put that into a stimulus wine glass. And, <clears throat> you know, choose a nice tonic water. Um, it's, there's been a nice resurgence of tonic waters lately where they're actually using quinine, so mm-hmm. you get the bitterness. It's not like in the days when we were younger where your tonic water came out of a two-liter bottle or one of those hoses at the bar. Uh-huh. which didn't have any quinine in it. So this is, um, it has, gets, has a nice bitter quinine taste. Okay, now medicinal, medicinal doses of quinine would be extremely bitter, almost unpalatable, mm-hmm. which is why the Brits in the early 19th century India, when they were getting malaria, mixed the quinine with soda water, lime juice, and sugar. Yeah. And then gin. Of course, because they're brilliant. Well, their expansion of their world power, I mean, it really has a lot to do with tonic water because of the quinine, a lot of the areas that they were trying to hold as colonies, they had a lot of issues with malaria and quinine, it cures malaria. So they would give a lot of the the, uh, soldiers, you know, a daily ration of of tonic water, but it was so bitter that they wanted to, they would add sugar and things to it. But what they started doing is they also had a ration of gin that they were allowed. So they started mixing the two together and that's really where the gin and tonic came from. There you go. So, Do you know what the phrase, a pound's a pound the world around means? I have no idea. Okay, what would you guess? A pound's a pound the world around. My dad taught me this. Well, I guess because their empire was worldwide that if it was a pound in Britain, it'd be a pound in India. I don't know. Like the weight of a pound? Yeah. Yeah, no, see, that's what people think. But their currency is the pound. Yeah. So they had, when their empire was all over the globe, 
you didn't have to worry about exchanging money in India because you know they used pounds instead of rupees. So a pound in England was the same as a pound in India as the same as a pound in Makes things a lot Canada. easier. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. What's the exchange rate today? <laughs> So two ounces of tonic water. This is the Fever Tree we're using. Q-Tonic is another brand that we will frequently use. And you want to really make sure you get a good tonic water. I mean, there's um, a lot of tonic waters, it's synthetic. And then they're also using like high fructose corn syrup, which can actually, you know, kind of ruin the taste a little bit. So, you know, spend a little bit extra to get the, the good tonic water. Very true. So I'm going to add, um, we're going to add three ice cubes to that. And it's already chilled, but we'll just sort of swirl it around to chill it a tad more. I have just a very small lime wedge. Just to get a hint of lime juice, I'm going to squeeze that and drop it in. And then uh, just a little bit of a lemon twist. And I'm not going to twist it. I'm just putting the lemon skin in there just for aesthetic purposes. So we drop that in. And then if you happen to have a lime leaf, we get these at our Asian market, a kafar lime leaf. It smells delicious. Mm -hmm. Of course it smells like lemon because I had my fingers on the lemon. You drop that in. Um, and this is a very pretty presentation. Presentation. If you have an edible flower, if you want to throw a pansy mm -hmm. or an nasturtium in, in there too, um, it just adds to the fun. So this is our presentation um, of the gin and tonic. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Cheers.